Hi, well welcome to the rolling hills of Umbria and the delightful Villa Montali. Uh, this is my friend of no name and I'm going to chat today about uh, buying a holiday home, particularly abroad and the tax implications for that. What we'll talk about is some general rules that will apply and also uh, the tax issues if you don't rent it out and the tax issues if you do. So I think I'll now release the cat before it goes its way entirely through my leg. See you in a moment. So how often when you're setting in a lovely foreign destination do you fancy buying a property abroad? Most people it never gets any further but for some they'll actually go the whole hog and buy that property and then for them saving, saving the costs can involve renting it out a little bit in order to uh, help share the burden. So what are the UK general issues that affect you if you, if you buy a property abroad? One of them is you have to be careful not to trip over the cat. Firstly, if you do rent it out, HMRC will want to know about it. Secondly, the local tax authorities may also want to know that you're doing this. If you were to die while you own the property, it is still part of your inheritance tax estate, even though it's not in the UK. Your worldwide assets come into play. And when you sell it, capital gains will have to be declared. If you've made a profit, you may have capital gains tax to pay. And only in a very few circumstances, if you're abroad, uh, will you be able to reinvest your money in another property and completely avoid any tax bill. So let's have a think about the detailed UK tax issues. So let's say you're going to buy a property abroad and you are not going to rent it out. What are the issues tax-wise that you need to think about? Well first off you have no obligation to tell HMRC that you're buying a holiday home abroad. I strongly recommend that you do keep evidence of how you funded the property because this could come back to be an issue in the future say if the revenue was investigating your affairs and they said oh, hold on a minute how did you afford to buy that £50,000 villa in Tuscany then we've got uh, the issue if you die while you own the property as I said before you've inheritance tax to pay because it's part of your estate every bit as much as your UK property and your UK savings. And finally capital gains tax. When you sell the property you'll have to declare the gain or indeed the loss on your tax return even if you don't normally fill in a tax return. Because of the value you're selling you'll have to declare that and if you've made a gain over and above your annual exemptions then there may be capital gains tax to pay. It doesn't matter whether you've brought the money back to the UK or done something else with it. The issue is if you're a UK resident and you sell something anywhere in the world, capital gains tax could come to play. Now let's have a wee think about the situation if you're going the next step and you're going to rent out your property. So what then are the additional issues if you decide that you're going to rent out your holiday home? Indeed, whether it's in the UK or abroad. The main one is you're going to have to declare the income to HMRC, whether or not you think you're making a profit. You need to do this on form SA1, where you tell the revenue the date from which you first were getting your overseas or UK rental. This will involve you in due course in completing a tax return. So then the question is, how do you claim expenses against the rents? If you live on the property some of the time, you can't simply claim a year's worth of expenses against, say, four weeks when you rented it out to someone else. So my rule of thumb is you add up all your days that you, your family and friends stayed in it rent-free, and then you add up all the days that your paying guests have stayed. And then you can simply work out the proportion of expenses that relate to those paying guests. And you can apportion your 
expenses accordingly and only claim the bit that relates to paying guests. So the next question is, what expenses can you claim for tax purposes against renting your holiday home? In general, it'll be most of the running costs. It will include your mortgage interest or your loan interest for buying the property. It will include local property taxes, service charges that the block may charge you, the cost of doing a changeover that you maybe pay to a cleaning lady or, or an estate agent, insurance, and most running costs, utility bills, telephone bills, etc. And so long as you apportion those and only claim the proportion related to the rental guests, then HMRC will have no difficulty with that. And the final point on how you to complete your tax return is affected by whether you pay any foreign income taxes, say you are paying local income tax on your rental income. If that's the case, then you will be able to claim that local income tax when you work out your UK tax liability. Simple example, say you've paid £400 of local income tax for renting it out and your UK tax liability comes out at £600. The UK will actually only want the extra £200. The final point to think about if you're buying a property abroad and uh, if it's in the EU, for example, is whether you can qualify for furnished holiday lettings. This is a special tax treatment and it gives you extra uh, reliefs in terms of uh, tax reliefs, really capital gains reliefs if you do reinvest in a different property and things like that. Really that you have to be running this as a business and you need to be letting it out for 105 days a year or more. And if you're in that sort of category, look out for my other video on furnished holiday lettings, where I'll go into more detail about the, the uh, things you need to do to meet those special tests. So, from the delightful hills of Umbria, I would like to thank you for listening to my video, and I hope that if you do buy a property abroad, you keep your tax affairs nice and tidy, and of course if you have any issues, give me a shout and I will be able to help you through all of them.